Come along with us to experience euphoria in Uruguay. This small country tucked between South American giants Argentina and Brazil has a mind of its own. In contrast to its boisterous neighbors, the first thing you'll notice is the calm, laid-back, avant-garde vibe. Tranquility is the language of the land. Along with safety, stability, and peacefulness, Uruguay is also full of eye-popping surprises that will awaken all your senses. Rich in Spanish and Italian heritage and lavished with nature's opulence, the entire country fulfills its promise of a bucket list destination. It's easily explored and pleasurable all year round. Fly in directly or hop the ferry from Buenos Aires across the mighty Rio de la Plata to charming Colonial de la Sacramento, a UNESCO World Heritage Site where you can tour the cobblestone historic quarter in the afternoon or to bustling Montevideo with its wide avenues, waterfront vistas, and colorful markets. From Montevideo, drive north through gorgeous green countryside dotted with vineyards and grazing cattle to the insanely beautiful beaches along Uruguay's 500 kilometers of dune-filled coastline. From popular Punta del Este to magical Valizas to jaw-dropping Punta del Diablo, the beach towns, fishing villages, lagoons, and wetlands are like so many gems from a precious necklace strewn along the shoreline. Uruguay is a traveler's utopia, a feeling that will wash over you and stay deep within. Our custom trips are drawn from a menu of enticing experiences with something interesting for everyone. This is Michael Gelber, CEO iWorld of Travel, inviting you to experience another Memories Beyond destination. iWorld of Travel. Expect more. Do more. Well, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are joining us from uh, around the world or the country. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to join our leadership series, uh, leadership webinar series, which uh, allows us to feature destinations that are near and dear to our heart. Today's presentation is to share with you uh, the discovery of Uruguay. Uh, Uruguay is uh, an amazing destination. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have, first and foremost, as a friend, uh, Paolo Pirelli, uh, who is our partner down in Uruguay, and uh, just a, a terrific number one human being, very passionate uh, about travel and her country, and takes everything uh, firsthand to ensure that uh, whatever we do in terms of booking travel down there, that they are handled with the best of care. And it is my pleasure uh, to turn the presentation over to Paolo Pirelli. As I mentioned, first and foremost, he's a friend of our company, a friend of our family, a friend of our team, uh, just a great human being, uh, very passionate, as I mentioned. Uh, really started as a guide down in uh, Latin America and Uruguay to really represent her country as best as we possible. And uh, got into the business part of it and then decided, you know what, I need to go and be a guide as well. So it's one of the few times you will see an owner of a, a partner of ours that also includes herself in doing guides on a regular basis to make sure she's up to date and in the know of everything that she is providing for your clients. Paolo? Hi everyone, good morning. Thank you, Michael, for your for your words. Um, and um, yes, I love I love guiding and I especially love guiding in my in my home country in Uruguay. So um, we're going to quickly go through the destination. Um, I'm just going to share with you some uh, quick figures about uh, the situation we're living right now with, uh, with the COVID, just to, 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 to give you an idea of what's happening in Uruguay. Um, uh, the virus has been very easy on us. Uh, we only have, uh, well, these figures are from a couple of days ago, but We've had a, a slightly above 900 cases in the whole country. Uh, and uh, right now we, have, we only have about uh, 55 active cases. Uh, unfortunately, we had 25 deceased. So um, the country itself, uh, we, we don't have uh, a big uh, problem with the virus at the moment. Uruguay was, uh, was very quick in, uh, in, 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 in closing um, most of the places where people could, 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 could what, what, where crowded areas could be found. Um, we never had a mandatory lockdown. It's always been a voluntary lockdown. 
And right now in the country, um, you, you, you can only tell there's a problem when you go to the supermarket because you have to wear a mask, but that's all. Uh, we're very happy with it. Right now, um, the borders are closed, but uh, just, um, just um, uh, last week, we, the, the flights with Europe were resumed. And um, right now, these flights are only for repatriation, Uruguayans that need to come back or Europeans that need to go back. Um, but we are expecting that if everything goes well, uh, soon this will be a tourism flight. So, so, so it's, uh, it's good news for us. Um, during this time, we have dedicated to develop new protocols and uh, uh, everything. Uh, so, that, so, so everything will be ready when, when the country opens again. We are suggesting people to start booking. We're expecting the borders to be open by September. But just to be on the safe side, we're uh, suggesting uh, people to start booking from October on. Uh, we're expecting a slow spring for us. Spring in Uruguay is September, October, November. Uh, and then we're expecting to, to, to have our normal uh, tourism from festive season on. Okay, Uruguay is a country of, uh, of outdoors and nature. Um, in the whole country, we have three million people, so we're something like a neighborhood of, uh, of a city in Sao Paulo, for instance. So it's, it's a very, um, very small population, which is, of course, helping us with the virus. It's a destination of nature and outdoors, which makes it uh, a, a, an amazing option uh, right now. And um, except for Montevideo, the capital city, where we have one million and a half people, the rest of the cities in the whole country, they don't have more than 100,000 people. So, as I said, the opportunities for crowded areas are very, very, very small. So, now, getting into the destination, which is what I like. Uh, this is a small map of Uruguay, an artistic map. Um, um, there you can see some of the of the most um, um, well-known areas, Montevideo, the capital city, where you can usually fly directly from, from the States. Um, or you can fly into Buenos Aires and take a small ferry from Buenos Aires to, to Montevideo, or a flight from Mon to Montevideo from Buenos Aires, or from Buenos Aires to Punta del Este. Just, just, that, that's just to give you an idea of how the destination works. And we're going to start through Colonia de Sacramento, which is the closest city to Buenos Aires. Colonia is a um, UNESCO site. It's a, it's a very romantic city with cobblestone streets. We usually receive people with a walking tour. I, I usually like very much to start with Colonia all of our trips because it, uh, it feels like uh, if you're coming from Buenos Aires, you feel like you, you've just taken a ferry 250 years backwards in time. It's a romantic city. Uh, we do a lovely walking tour along the cobblestone streets, know a bit of our history. And usually one of our national drinks, our typical Uruguayan drinks that we have is called the mate, which is like a herb that we, we take with a metal straw. And usually, not now during COVID, but usually we share this. this it's, a, it's a drink with, that reflects friendship for us. So usually Colonia is where we do a mate tasting. And we give a mate to each one of our guests and we, we share this mate. Uh, we, share, we share how we do this mate. Of course, everyone has their own. Um, and it's a way of, uh, of, uh, of understanding uh, the Uruguayan uh, culture. These are some of the experiences that we do in Colonia, the walking, the biking. We do a lot of biking in Uruguay. Um, and this is one of the properties that I like very much. Most of the properties we, that we try to use are local properties with, uh, with just a few rooms. This hotel, for example, that we love very much is the Charco Hotel, only seven rooms in the old town just in front of the, of the, of the river in, in Colonia. Then from Colonia de Sacramento, if we go up to the north, we'll find, we will find the region of Carmelo. And here, Carmelo, the landscape changes a lot in Carmelo. Uh, these are the Jesuit ruins of Calera de las Huérfanas, which we usually visit on the way to Carmelo. And the Jesuits were the first to plant vines in Uruguay, so 250 years ago. So this is how the history of wines began in our country. Here we visit a couple of different vineyards. Uh, this is the Marina of El Faro, from where we usually take a uh, what we call the Sunset Cruise is an antique boat that we sail into the Uruguay River where the river plate ends and the Uruguay River begins. There you can see Carmelo, it, uh, it's uh, on, the, on the shores of the Uruguay River. 
We do picnics on the vineyards. And these are some of the activities, the biking along the vineyards. Uh, we can do polo clinics in this area. This is the antique boat that we use to sail into the, into the Uruguay River. And some of the properties that we love in this region, the Narbona Wine Lodge, for example, this is the Relé Chateau property. It's a beautiful property with only five rooms. So this is how crowded it can get. <laughs> and then the Carmela Resort, which is a, a beautiful property as well, only 44 rooms in the middle of the forest uh, with an amazing yoga studio overlooking the shores of the Uruguay River. They also have golf, uh, an amazing spa, so beautiful property as well. Then from the region of Carmelo, we will go up north and into the center of the country. This is where we have uh, the, the Black River that divides Uruguay in two. And here we have a ranch, beautiful ranch called La Bendición. This is the Uruguay has a lot of countryside. Here you can see some of the most amazing sunrises and sunsets. La Bendición is a traditional um, estancia. Uh, for us, the estancias are like ranches. And you can get to have an idea of the typical countryside life in Uruguay. They have water sports. There you can see more or less an idea of the, of the decoration, which is very, very authentic. They, they breed cattle. Uh, we can do some water sports like uh, water ski, canoeing, the, the, um, the tours on carriages horseback riding, Horse, horses, it's a, it's a, horses are very, very uh, popular in Uruguay. We, we learn how to ride since we are born mostly. <laughs> then from La Bendición to Montevideo, which is the capital city, we have about a uh, three hours drive. And uh, this is also very important to know, Uruguay is small, so you, you, you get to do a lot of different things um, uh, and different landscapes and a very, very big diversity just by driving maybe 200 kilometers, 100 kilometers in the landscape and the atmosphere changes completely. For example, Montevideo, the capital city, it's a, it's a, it's a city that overlooks the river. Uh, it's very small and it can be divided in two. The, the old city of Montevideo and then the modern city that developed after the walls of the old city were torn down. Uh, this is all the new Montevideo that, that, what, that developed. And usually when we arrive to Montevideo, the first thing we, we, we do is we go to the old city, to the port market, which is a very lively area. And there we have like a concentration of 15 or 20 different parrillas. The parrillas are these restaurants that specialize in, gr in grilled meat. Um, we love meat in Uruguay and we love food in general. Uh, um, most of our families go around for all of the time. We're, we're, we have big lunches within the family and we're already planning what we're going to have for dinner. <laughs> so the port market is very lively. And then from there, uh, this is a beautiful experience that I always like to, to include in our tours. It's called the Candombe experience. And the Candombe is uh, it's a typical music in Uruguay. Uh, and it's like the, the music of Carnival, one of the musics of Carnival. Carnival has a very long, uh, so, sorry, Uruguay has a very long Carnival, the, lo the longest Carnival in the world. The whole month of February is Carnival in our country. And we have two routes. One route that we, did, we inherited from the Spanish. And from there we have the Murgas, which are like groups of people that they, they have these uh, uh, amazing songs and and, uh, and they perform every night of February in a different street theater that we call Tablados. And then we have the carnival that we inherited from the slaves that were brought from Africa. And from them, we, we got the candombe. The slaves, at the, the slaves at the times of the colonies, they were allowed to celebrate one day a year. And this was the day that they would uh, wake up very early in the morning and start to play their drums, calling the rest to come and celebrate. This is why our main parade is called the calling, Las Llamadas. And for us, the carnival and especially the candombe is the music of freedom. It, it, it represents the right to celebrate. The, the Uruguay was the first country in the whole of the Americas that um, abolished slavery. It's a very progressive country. Slavery was abolished here in 1847. Um, and, um, uh, and just as like the abolishment of slavery, we, we, it was the first country to, to have the eight hours uh, of, uh, of, um, um, uh, of, of uh, legalized work. Um, it was the first country where women were allowed to vote 
where um, uh, gay marriage was uh, was legal. It's a, it's a very progressive country. So I love to do this visit. This is Lobo Nunez. We visit his studio, and he's like the soul of Candombe. Lobo Nunez is a uh, he's the fifth generation. His great 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 grandfather um, uh, bought his freedom out of slavery selling brooms in the old city. So it's a very interesting visit to do. Let me show him, let me show you, there's the, his studio. And this was a group, we can do this with, uh, with FITs, with like two people or with a group like this. And he plays with his uh, grandson and with his son. And, uh, and he's a very low profile guy, but he's very, very famous in the music world. He, this guy sells drums to people like Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, for example. So he's very, very well known in the music world, but very low profile. So it's not like a typical tour. It's uh, something very special that we love to do. These are some of the properties that we use in Montevideo, the Sofitel, which is a virtuoso property. Uh, of course, we can organize all the virtuoso amenities for those agents who are virtuoso. This is the Alma Historica, which is an amazing small property with only 16 rooms in the old city. Uh, very cultural property. Each one of the rooms has the name of a different Uruguayan personality that was important for Uruguay in some way. So I love this property and from there you can walk all around in the old city and, and do all of the interesting visits. Then we're going to go from Montevideo, we're going to go up north. Um, this area here um, from Pueblo Den to Pueblo Garzón, this is the small towns that we have on north of Route 9. These towns and this region is nowadays known as the Tuscany of Uruguay. As you can see from the landscape, it's, uh, it's very different to Montevideo or the other areas where we, we, we just uh, visit. Uh, and Pueblo Den is a small town. Here uh, we have uh, two amazing properties, Sacromonte. These are four rooms, four glass houses with green roofs. They call themselves a landscape hotel. They're in a valley in the middle of the cerros uh, that are like hills. We can do hiking, horseback riding, this place is all about design, and uh, as you can see, the, we have a 360 view of the of the of the vineyards. They do their own wine. Um, they have like small jacuzzis, each one of the of the of the small glass glass houses. There you can see how the the landscape reflects on the on the on the glass of the rooms, which is amazing. We can do horseback riding, and they have a hill. And at the top of the hill, they have like a tasting room and there we do we organize um dinners sunset dinners and tastings and so on another of the properties in this region is aras las tordillas this is a a ranch but it's very different to to sacramonte but also very beautiful again the landscape it's amazing it's four rooms each one with a more uh, traditional decoration you can see all with wood and the typical ponchos that we have in uruguay the owner here, she loves horses and it's an amazing place for horseback riding and trekking and hiking. Very good food as well. That's Aras Las Tordillas. So we continue to the next town within the Tuscany of Uruguay and here we arrive to Pueblo Garzón. Uh, this Pueblo Garzón is in the north of the small town of Jose Ignacio. You might have heard of this town uh, because um, maybe Francis Malman is, uh, is familiar to you. He, he's a very, very famous chef from Argentina. Um, he, 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 um, there's, a, there's a complete chapter of uh, Chef's Table from Netflix that's about him. He's an, an amazing character. He used to have his restaurant in Jose Ignacio, uh, and, uh, but he would come to Garçon very often because he loves cooking in the streets and on the beach, so he, he used to have to come to Garçon to ask for permits, uh, local permits, to, 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 to cook in the, in the public areas. And so he fell in love with this town. So he closes his restaurant in Jose Ignacio and opens his restaurant in Garzón. The town of Garzón grew around the train station. Um, it was a very uh, lively town with a theater, with a, with a big carnival and everything. Then the crisis arrived and the, the, the train stopped working and the Saladeros, this was an area of Saladeros. The Saladeros were, were the, these places where, um, I think in English you say, the Salt, uh, salt tree houses where the meat used to be kept with salt. So um, the refrigerators appear, so the salt houses, the saladeros closed, and most of the people in town had to go. So it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was like a ghost town when Malman arrived. And uh, he fell in love with a, with, a, with a small town, 
and opens his restaurant in, in town. And a lot of his, his, uh, his uh, friends start arriving and they also fall in love with the town. So this is some of the, of the, of the um, cooking classes that we organized with him in the, towns of the, in, the, in the streets of the town of Garzón. It's amazing. Uh, we do cooking classes. This was a group that we had, and uh, we organized the table there in the streets of the town. Really interesting and very hands-on. <laughs> One of the friends of Malman who arrived was uh, Alejandro Bulgeroni, who started with Bodega Garzón. This is one of the properties that we, that we use here in town. It's called Casa Ana, very small and sweet. You can see the decoration. It's really, really nice and different to the other, the other places. So as I was saying, one of the persons who arrives to this area and also falls in love with Garzón is Alejandro Bulgeroni, who starts with his summer home and he soon uh, develops, he, he establishes Bodea Garzón. There you can see the vineyards of Bodea Garzón. Nowadays we have something like 4,000 hectares of uh, olive plantations and, and vineyards. Uh, olive oil is very famous in Uruguay as well. All of these areas about olive trees as well, and we can do olive oil tastings and wine tastings. This is this is the the, the building of Bodea Garzón. It's uh, very sustainable. It was uh, made uh, all this water here. They 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 gather the water from the rain and they keep the the temperature of the cellar, which is below. As you can see, the 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 landscape of the area is really 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 beautiful. There you can see an image of the of the vineyards. So we can do some some tastings and the our sorry our our national grape is called uh, the tanat the tanat is a red wine full red wine it's uh it's uh, very much recognized in the in the um, among the wines of the new world it's like a like a like a like the malbec for argentina it's the, the, the tanat to uruguay is the same as the malbec to argentina it's a very good wine so just to give you a reference of we were, what we were just um, um, uh, seeing, we just went to Colonia Sacramento, the old town, then the vineyards and the wine country of the region of uh, Carmelo. We saw the typical center of the country with the traditional estancias and ranches. And then here we uh, just saw the, the area that we know as the Tuscany of Uruguay. And now we're going to visit uh, the very east of the country where we have the natural reserves and the national parks, and we're going to focus in the village of Cabo Polonio. Cabo Polonio is a very, very small village, uh, completely surrounded by sand dunes. There's no streets into the town, into the village. So the only, get, the only way to get there is um, hiking, uh, horseback riding, or on a very big trucks that we call the monster trucks uh, that go through the dunes. The um, vehicles are not allowed into the town. There you can see an image of the, of the dunes of Cabo Polonio. Um, there's a three hour hike, or we can also organize a one hour and a half hike um, for an easier hike there. You go up the dunes, up to the, to the Buena Vista Hill from where you have an amazing view of the whole ocean and the town. There you can see. And the village itself, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very like a sort of like a hippie chic um, village. Uh, there is no electric light, no running water. People, probably something like 20 families live here all year round, they fish. And here we have one of the largest populations of sea lions in the whole of South America. So um, we, got, we hike all the way to the lighthouse. There we can see the, the, the sea lions, uh, one of the largest populations in the whole of South America. We have lunch at a seaside restaurant called La Perla. Uh, amazing food, amazing fresh fish. And then we take the four wheel drives out of the town. Okay, if people don't like hiking or they're not very active, we can also get into the town and out of the town on, on these fun tracks. <laughs> and then we get to the region of, um, of the coast of the, of the, of the Bojo Beach, Bojo, Bojo style beach of Jose Ignacio, La Barra, and Punta del Este. And uh, one of the most famous areas here is Punta del Este. But I always like to point out that Punta del Este has grown so much nowadays that it is like a small Miami. 
So even though we still visit the region because it's lovely, and just here, just before Punta del Este, we have the, the amazing Casa Pueblo, for example, we always suggest people to stay between La Barra and the region of Jose Ignacio, which is more like another atmosphere, more like small towns, uh, fishermen towns, and uh, uh, um, um, downtown areas with uh, small stores and things like that. So I'm going to show you now a bit of how these different areas look like. Casa Pueblo, this is a place that we usually visit. It's just before Punta del Este. It's an amazing place designed by a Uruguayan artist called Carlos Paez Vilaró. Unfortunately, he passed away some years ago, but you can still, we can still visit the place. Half of the building is uh, the museum and his uh, atelier. And the other half is the, uh, and, uh, and there, there's also a hotel here, sorry. And then the other half is still the private home of the family. So uh, we visit the museum. We have some of the most amazing sunsets here. You can have a beautiful view of the ocean. So it's like a must do when we visit uh, the region of Punta del Este. Then this is Punta del Este. As you can see, there's a lot of high rises, the, the Gorriti Island, the marina, which is beautiful. So we usually go here for the, for the day just to see some of the highlights of the, of the area. But when we cross the bridge of La Barra, this is the the, the undulated bridge of La Barra, as, uh, I mean, everything in Uruguay uh, has the sign and, and art is very big. So you will see that uh, there's a lot of bridges that uh, are like, a, are either undulated or circular. Uh, this is one of the, and here you can see the, the town of La Barra, as you can see the, 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 um, the, um, the atmosphere is very different to Punta. It's more like small and tiny. This is the Maldonado stream, amazing for canoeing and for kayaking, and the village of La Barra here. This is the Achugari Foundation. This is an art exhibition center. Uh, Pablo Achugari is a very well-known uh, artist from Uruguay. He, he works in amazing uh, big, uh, here you can see him working, amazing uh, pieces of marble that he brings from Carrara, so he never travels uh, light. <laughs> He's, uh, he, uh, when we have people that are interested in art, we, we let him know so he receives us personally and he explains about his art. If you have people interested in art, uh, usually they know him very well because he's always exhibiting in, in, in Art Basel and the, the famous uh, um, um, exhibitions in, 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 in different parts of the world. And this is the sculpture part. This is part of his private collection of art. Um, he started with the Achugari Foundation as a way of, uh, of promoting local and regional art. And we usually organize picnic lunches here. People love this visit. It's, a, it's also a must do in, in, in the region. Um, some of the, of the sculptures in the park, one of the picnics there. And then we get to the small town of Jose Ignacio. Okay, the lighthouse in Jose Ignacio, as you can see, also different atmosphere. All of this region is amazing for different activities, horseback riding, hiking, surfing, kite surfing. Um, this is La Huesa, a very well-known uh, um, beach restaurant here in Jose Ignacio. La Susana, which is the beach club of the big properties, uh, some amazing properties that we also have in the, in the region, and some of the activities that we can organize in this area. Um, uh, usually festive season is, uh, is, is very crowded. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, if you have clients coming in festive, you should book very much in advance because it's always uh, fully booked. Uh, and during the last years, we've also had a lot of requests for uh, spring break. Uh, all of this region here in Uruguay in general, it's amazing for multi-generational families, also for couples, but for families, it's amazing because it's a destination where we can do different activities like the horseback riding. There's an amazing ride that we do to one of the lagoons here and we swim with the horses. Biking is very popular, hiking, uh, canoeing. Uh, we work with uh, four or five different local chefs and we can organize, for example, we can go and cook at one of the homes of one of the local chefs. Art is also very big in all of this region and in, in Uruguay in general. And then I'm going to show you some of the small uh, properties that we have in the, in, the, in the area. The Fasano in the area of La Barra, 10 amazing suites with an, a beautiful view. 
uh, here, this is nine kilometers from the beach, and then they have 20 bungalows, which are really amazing too. This hotel is also very well known for their restaurant called Las Piedras. This is an Italian restaurant that they have in, in property, which is really, really well known and, and, and lovely. And then the big properties that some of you might, might have heard of, uh, Estancia Beach, uh, big in the countryside. This is 12 rooms, and these properties have the particularity that um, they were designed, each one of the rooms of the properties were designed by a different Uruguayan artist. This is 12 suites of the Estancia, the main living room. It's uh, in the core of the property. We have a, a, a piece of Pablo Achugarri, a marble piece of Achugarri. The, the ceiling of this, of this living room, it's a, it's a drawing by one of the, by, by, by Clever Lara, a very well-known Uruguayan artist that draw the image of Google Earth of Uruguay in the ceiling. And then each one of the suites is very different, as I said, designed by a different Uruguayan artist. That was in the countryside, Bahia Vic. It's um, on the beach, on the dunes. Again, main building completely surrounded by pools. Uh, and then we have the bungalows, which is a more uh, private experience. Um, you open the door of the bungalow and you're there directly on the sand. And Playa Vic, which is in town. Uh, and from here you can walk to town. And uh, again, just in front of the, of the ocean with an amazing infinity pool and the structure building here, we, we have three amazing suites overlooking the, the ocean. So that was a quick tour of Uruguay. I hope you can come by, your, by yourself and visit uh, the country. We will be more than happy to receive you. And if you have uh, any special guests, I will be more than happy to guide them. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Wow, I've got to tell you, I am, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say what a, what a destination. My anniversary is on uh, 10-30-10, and I turned 60 on 11-10. So that may be something I'm going to call you about going down to just. Oh, oh please, please do so. <laughs> that would be great. I mean, beautiful. I, just didn't, I mean, I knew Uruguay was beautiful. I know we have spoken about it. We have seen some different things. But to see it all put together like that and to be mapped around the country and to see all the different characteristics and the culture that comes through, it's, uh, it's very impressive. I mean, and again, we, we like to always bring new ideas and new destinations to our travel advisory community. And, uh, and, and of course, with coming out of COVID-19, we, we think that finding places that are closed and easy to get to that are new and interesting is really going to be what's going to take place uh, sooner than later. So, Shane, I'm going to let you take the lead on the, there's some questions I know down below. We'll go through those uh, questions, whether they're for me or for Val, and, uh, and then we'll be... Uh, Fantastic. That was great. I also learned so much about Uruguay that I had not known how progressive and laid back and amazing it is. Um, uh, to echo your sentiment, Michael, Gabriela in the comments said, this is a great, this is great. I'm from Uruguay and I'm also discovering places I'd never heard of. Thank you so much. Great. <laughs> um, so, okay. So the, some of the questions are, um, a quick one was Carmelo Resort previously a Four Seasons? Yeah, that's true. Carmelo Resort was a Four Seasons. Then the property was sold to the same owner who actually owns the Narbona Wine Lodge. And uh, he decided that they wanted a change. So they turned into a Hyatt. And they were hired for about five years. And this year, they decided they didn't want to be a Hyatt because it, Hyatt is a very corporate brand and they didn't feel it go with the hotel. So right now, they're just a Carmela Resort. And the service is very good, just as it was when it was a Four Seasons or Hyatt. And they're just, um, right now, they're um, they um, deciding whether they're going to be um, part of a, another brand or, or they're going to stay just as the Carmela Resort. Fantastic. Okay, so that was from Michael McCullough. Uh, next question comes from Diana Wiseman. Does Uruguay have agricultural exports other than meat and wine? Uh, yes, we have. We export wool as well, uh, soy, rice. So yes, it's uh, our, our, our two main industries, I would say, it's, it's basically uh, agriculture and, um, uh, and tourism as well. Um, all right. Um, as far as time of year, what would you recommend for a time of year to travel to Uruguay? So I would say it depends on the clients. For example, um, our season goes from October down to end of April. Um, if people want to go to the beach, then they should think about December to end of March. 
if, if you have clients that want to, want to go to places that are full with uh, fully booked restaurants and seeing people everywhere, then I would suggest they should be here between the 20th of December and the 10th of January. But if it's people that they, they want to they wanna learn a bit more about the local life more than just seeing crowded areas, I, I, I always suggest spring and autumn, which are amazing. March is one of my favorite uh, months. It's still summer. Climate is amazing, but it's not so crowded and it's not so expensive. Fantastic. Uh, next question comes from Chip Stevens. Is English widely spoken and is there a rail network? A railway? Yeah, is there a rail network or I guess what would be the infrastructure to travel around well, mostly? No, I would say, well, we do have a railway, but a lot, a, 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 um, a big part of it doesn't work anymore or it works mostly for, for goods, not for passengers. So the, the best way to get to know the country is either self-driving. Self-drive is very easy in Uruguay and it's very safe as well. Uh, a lot of people speak English. We, English, I mean, our, 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 our local language is, uh, is it's, uh, it's Spanish, but a lot of people speak English. Uh, and if people don't, don't want to self-drive, then we usually provide private transfers. Fantastic. Oh, we, we do. And, and if there's people that want to do it, do it more locally, then we have a lot of buses that run in between the cities and they work really well and they're clean and they're quick and they're very inexpensive. Okay, so, all right, fantastic. The next question was, um, there was a, a place mentioned after Sacramonte in Pueblo Eden that was uh, four rooms. Can she, th this person missed the name. Can you yes, remind me what that is? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's what we call a, a sort of like, like an estancia, a ranch. It's called Aras Las Tordillas. It's H-A-R-A-S, then L-A-S, and then uh, T O R D I L L A S. Aras Las Tordillas. Fantastic. I think that was all the questions I had for now coming through. Okay. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much, Paella. That was uh, really great. I can't wait. As you know, we're putting together, we're working with you on our luxury, luxury LSG, our luxury small group uh, departure. We're putting, I think, three or four of them together for uh, 2021. And of course, we always do uh, FIT and uh, family packaging or uh, anything that uh, the travel advisor would need uh, to get their clients interested in down there. Uh, terrific. So I see something from Adam Martindale. Adam, uh, if you can uh, uh, give us your email, we'll have Alita Paljevic to get a hold of you and work on putting together uh, that little small group for yourself. Or uh, you can email her at a, oh, there it is, perfect. We will get it to you, thanks so much. Uh, really, I, I loved it. I love every one of these, to be honest with you, but uh, this one was really special. It really, it, it almost seems like Uruguay, Uruguay is a, such a melting pot of European, Latin, Italian, French, all into one destination. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very eclectic and, uh, and you just feel the character in each location that you shared with us. So, I am. I was being genuine about being excited about talking about coming down there in October. And uh, there we go. Thank you all for participating. Stay safe, uh, stay healthy, uh, stay informed. And if there's anything that we can do for any of you, any collateral, any marketing, any videos, uh, just feel free to reach out to us and it'll be our pleasure to help you do whatever you need to do. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and the balance of your week.